Good morning! I am Wayworn Worm, and welcome to my channel. And welcome to the first episode of The Horde of the Dragon Queen, called Greenest. Our story begins along the Uldan Trail in the green fields of the western heartlands of the land of Faerun. For the past several days, a group of adventurers, group only because happenstance threw them together, has been traveling along the Uldan Trail toward the city of Greenest, the only proper town along the route. Quara Maravaldi, a young human noblewoman standing five and a half feet tall, granddaughter of a well-known dragon slayer and a budding sorcerer. Tessaly Amblecrown, a well-traveled older paladin who comes up to Quara's forehead and has a great axe and a great sword in back holsters. Morn Greycastle, a sagely wizard draped in robes, leaning on a wizard staff. He is almost the same height as Quara. Garrett Highhill, a young, ambitious halfling monk who struggles to keep up with the pace of the group. He is by far the shortest member. Mara Shimov, a cleric of Selun, who has devoted her entire life to her goddess, and is the same height as Tessaly. Lastly is Ulthal Flintfinder Katho Olivai, a Goliath folk hero smith turned fighter who fights with two weapons and is almost two feet taller than Quara. The group met each other at the north base of the Cloud Peaks, which mark the boundary of the Sword Coast and the nation of Amn. Here they turned off the coastway and have been walking a road that lazily winds across the rolling grasslands. Sundown is approaching when the group tops a rise and sees the town of Greenest, the final destination for each member of the group, although for different reasons, just a few short miles away. But instead of the pleasant, welcoming town they had expected, they see columns of black smoke rising from burning buildings, running figures that are little more than dots at the distance they are, and a dark winged shape wheeling low over the keep that rises above the center of the town. It only takes them a few moments to realize that Greenest is being attacked by a dragon. This group of almost strangers look at each other for a moment, each processing different thoughts. Morn is the first to break the silence. For many years, I called Greenest my home. I owe them a debt, and I seek to repay it tonight. With those words, he starts walking down the rise without waiting for anyone to respond to him. Before he has even finished down the top of the rise, Mara speaks up. I believe I'm in the same boat as Morn here. I must do something. And she follows. Quora shrugs and joins the two. With Tessel. Garrett and Ulthal quickly on Quora's heels. By the time they reach the town, the sun has fully set, and they stopped just out of the town to confer. We should aim for the keep. It is probably where any resistance to this attack is likely to be centered, Morn says. Mara nods her assent and adds in, We should try traveling along the creek on the south end of the town. The keep is on the other side of town, and if we want to sneak through town, the best way to do it is the creek. Uthal considers for a moment. Yes, this sounds like the best course of action. As the others agree, the group moves off towards the creek, skirting the edge of the town. They manage to be mostly quiet as they pass through buildings that have been mostly gutted by fire, or in some cases have been left untouched. Suddenly, without warning, five humans dash out from between two buildings. A limping man and three young children race across the street into more shadows, and a woman carrying a round shield and a broken spear turns and faces back in the direction from which they came. Eight kobolds stream out of the alley on the family's heels and fan out toward the woman, who looks determined to delay the creatures for as long as possible. 
Without a moment's hesitation, Garrett unsheaths his short sword and rushes the closest kobold and stabs at it, only to have the kobold deflect his sword with its dagger. Quora is only moments behind him in reacting, quickly casting a bubble of acid that shoots towards two of the kobolds and pops between them, covering one in acid. But the other one manages to jump out of the way and escape unharmed. Morn calmly steps forward in front of the woman and looks at her briefly with a smile before putting his hands fanned out in front of him, thumbs touching, and letting loose a gout of fire that catches three kobolds. One drops to its belly, managing to avoid most of the flame, while the other two get hit square by the fire. All three of them quickly burn to death. The kobold that is toe-to-toe -to -toe with Garrett slashes out with its dagger and is easily parried. Two load their slings, one sending a stone toward Quora and the other sending one toward Morn. Quora gets hit square in the chest by the stone shot toward her, but the one toward Morn sails high over his head and hits a building across the street. The two remaining kobolds both run at Garrett and try and team up on him. They both hit, stabbing him deep with their daggers, leaving him much worse for the wear. Tessel pulls out her great axe and marches to one of the kobolds surrounding Garrett. With a look of contempt, she cleaves it in two. Uthal joins the growing melee, beheading one of the kobolds with his longsword and running another through with his short sword. Mara runs up to one of the kobolds with a sling out and swings her mace, caving the dragon-like face in. The woman tries to move to attack the last kobold, but she is held back by Morn as Garrett rushes it and quickly dispatches it. As the fight finishes, Leanne just looks at the group in awe. I, I'm not sure who you are, but you have come to us in our time of greatest need. I am Leanne, and this, she points at the man with the children, is my husband Kuth. We must make it to the keep. It is the only safe place left in Greenest. A few of the town militia have made sorties into the town, so I assume there's not an effective cordon around the keep yet. Uthal smiles down at the woman. Glad to meet you, Linen. I am Uthal Flintfinder Katha Olavai. But please, call me Flintfinder. We are making our way to the keep as well. We are heading to the creek to try and sneak through the town. Please, come with us, and we will keep you safe if our sneaking fails. The rest of the group voices their assent to the plan, and the group of six become a group of eleven as they work their way down through the thick bushes into the shallow creek and slowly move along the south edge of the town of Greenest. After what feels like an eternity, they safely make it through the town and scramble up the bank of the creek and through more bushes as they reach a small, flat area near one of the keep walls. Quickly running toward the wall, they manage to find the deep shadows the wall is casting and start slowly moving around the wall toward the front gate. As they approach the gate, it opens a short bit and two guardsmen rush out and start motioning the group to enter. Quickly obliging, all eleven rush into the keep. Once they are safe in the courtyard, Linen looks at the group. Thank you again for all you have done to, for my family. If we live to see the dawn, that dawn and everyone after will be because you saved us on this night. However, this is where we part ways. My husband has been injured and we must seek a cleric. As Mara steps forward, Leanne smiles at her. Thank you, but no. She looks toward the sky and the dragon that must still be up there. I think all of your healing powers will be needed by your friends before this night is over. With those final words, she ushers her family away deeper into the keep. The six adventurers 
are briefly left alone, wondering what to do, when two guards walk up to them. Clearly, you are adventurers. We desperately need folk like you tonight. Will you come with us to speak with Governor Nighthill? He is the man in charge of this town, and could use your help. Morn steps forward. Yes! I remember Tarbrawl Nighthill from when I was a lad, and he is a good man. I don't know if I speak for the whole group, but I can speak for myself when I say Greenus can have whatever it needs from me tonight. Mara nods. I also grew up here and would die for this town if that is what is called for. Uthal chuckles in pleasure at the two and adds, I will also help this town in need. Garrett studies the sky for a minute. Well, my main purpose for coming here may have been fulfilled. But I will not turn down someone in need. Tessel grins in spite of herself. I'm good at killing things, and it looks like you need some things killed. Quora quickly nods. I am the granddaughter of Salazar Maravaldi. He may be able to help with your dragon problem better than I can, but I am here, and he is not. So I shall attempt to live up to the family name. The guard looks at them slightly impatiently, and once they all assent, he breathes a sigh of relief and motions for them to to follow him to one of the keep's walls and leads them to a parapet where he leaves them. Standing before them is a human male who appears to be about 60 years old. The right side of his face and head are bandaged. His right arm hangs in a sling and his light blue tunic is stained with his own blood. And that is where we leave our party at the end of their arrival at Greenest. They expected to see a nice, pleasant town, but instead, there is a dragon attack. Tune in on Tuesday, November 28th, for the continuation of the Horde of the Dragon Queen. And tune in on this Thursday for my last new series of the month.